Hey, it's the VZ Gamer Show! And this week we're talking Fallout 76 Wastelanders and whether skin and blood can breathe life back into the post-apocalyptic West Virginia landscape. Then we're breaking down everything we know about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Stick around. Hey everybody, it's James Davenport with the PC Gamer Show. And up first, we're talking Fallout 76 Wastelanders with none other than Lauren Morton, a common, frequent, longtime PC Gamer contributor. Uh, oh, that's me. That is you. And you've been on the show. You were on the show a while back once. Uh, so we're going mm-hmm. to, it's been a while. So let's reintroduce you and uh, just, just get, get, get basically your entire life story uh, in two minutes. No, I want to know. So you kind of started off with PC Gamer, but now you're kind of, you, you've, you've written uh, your bylines have been elsewhere. Where else can people kind of read your stuff, and where can they follow you? First of all, on the internet. Oh yeah, uh, I, I yell about things sometimes on Twitter, as everybody's <laughs> want to do these days. Yeah. Uh, you can find me doing various things on PC Gamer, as I always have, uh, and writing news some of the time over at Rock Paper Shotgun. Because apparently I don't do anything but PC stuff ever. (laughs) Try as I might. Um, And very occasionally other various places, Kotaku once or twice, but mainly hang out with PC folks. Right on. Right on. It's good good to see your, uh, you know, it's it's such a good feeling uh, when I like read a random news article from another website or, or read a feature and I see a familiar name and that's happened a couple of times mm-hmm. over the last couple of years with you. And it, it makes me very happy. Uh, a couple of things you've written. What are some things people might know that you've written for us or think favorite uh, things you've written for us? I, I could name a few, but, uh, I want to know what you're most proud of. Some good features. Uh, probably, uh, a few things have come up recently. One of my personal favorites got re-promoted and republished recently was, Ooh. um, uh, sleeps on bridges, mm-hmm. the laziest, but not actually laziest player in elder scrolls online. Um, that's a, a big favorite of mine. Um, and then I think my first piece ever that you commissioned from oh, me whoa. got put back on Twitter, um, a couple weeks ago also. And that was, uh, why we praise the sun in, in <laughs> dark souls. And that was a, that was a fun one. That was a, a good thing to get to do first. Yeah. So those are, those are two fun ones, and then people might also know me uh, for penises in video games. Why is making them so hard? I feel like a lot of all timer, all timer. I was really proud that I sent that to Wes <laughs> with that headline, and he said that's the best Slack notification I've ever gotten. And I said, so we're doing it right. Uh, some great work, great, great stuff. Uh, <laughs> what kind of, I mean, like, well, and just, I mean, just I wanted to say this before we move on. To, speaking of Dark Souls, I'm so ready. For Elden Ring, so we get like five <laughs> plus more years, maybe a decade of of uh, great features. <laughs> Every I, I know I can't wait. <laughs> and one of my uh, a friend of mine brought it up or was asking about mm-hmm. it recently, and I think I just kept saying to them, "Oh, Elden Ring," <laughs> and like quoting <laughs> various weird passages of the trailer, and they were not as into it as I. <laughs> oh, bummer! They just don't get it. They don't get it. No, they don't understand. Um, so what kind of stuff do you typically play? What, 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 what's your jam? Um, so we're here to talk about Fallout, and that yeah. is one of my jams. Certainly, I'm a, yeah. I'm a big RPG person a lot of the time. Um, what else? We just saw uh, some Yakuza stuff mm. today during that Xbox, and I, I've, yeah. I've never played a Yakuza game, and I keep thinking that that's a mistake I've made. <laughs> and... <laughs> Someone who knows more about them described them to me today as what was it the the perfect amount of of hunks punches and drama and silliness or something like yes. that and I was like okay yep that yes. sounds sounds about right and these so hunks, but usually yeah. these hunks have feelings too it's amazing these hunks have feelings it's uh, every crazy too. attack animation people gif of a yakuza game makes me think more and more that i should be playing them like the weird it. cell phone things or like there was a crying giant baby so i play rpgs but i want to be someone who plays yakuza games okay so. all right cool. <laughs> uh it's something very realistic to aspire to i think um 
Well, Lauren, thanks for being here. We're going to be talking today, though, about, like you said, Fallout 76 Wastelanders. This, this, gosh, it's been out for like about a, it's about a month now. So it's had a month to, to kind of perk, oh, less than a month, about three weeks. Uh, mm-hmm. Some time to like, people have time to, had time to actually see how it articulates in something like the long term. Uh, mm-hmm. This is the update that brought human NPCs to the game, which is kind of a weird thing to say. And and probably yeah. it will sound weirder and weirder the further we get away from it. Like a Fallout game launched without people in it. <laughs> Did you know this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was weird at launch and it kept being weird. And it, I, yeah, you're right. The further we get away from it, the more that like year end change will be like, wait, it was ever... They ever weren't there. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Was that the case? Yeah. And um, it's funny because um, maybe you can kind of detail what, how this, yeah, why don't you, just, it, it, it's kind of hard to parse, I think, if you're just coming into this game for the, the first time or the first time in a long time. The first Fallout 76, the first Fallout, the, the original release, you know, it was a bunch of robots and terminals were sort of like taking you through this, the early days of, of the wasteland. This is like, mm-hmm. uh, closer to the, the fallout than, uh, a lot of the other games in the series, if I'm not mistaken. So there are fewer people venturing out. Um, mm-hmm. and how, <laughs> how do they kind of like change it without destroying what was there? How do they bring people in and how does that articulate? How does that sort of change what you're doing and seeing moment to moment? Yeah, so one of the, probably the best thing they did in incorporating and explaining it is Mm. they said, okay, it's a year later in our world. Also, it's a year later now in the world of Fallout 76. Mm -hmm. The people weren't there before, and they've come back because it's been a whole year now. And that helps, like, massively just... (laughs) help you you know suspend your disbelief Mm -hmm. and the whole thing like what do you mean people just reappeared how (laughs) silly is that but you know a year later life is you know folks are coming back into the mountains from other places Mm -hmm. um when it launched it it was odd because you were constantly chasing behind the main quest you were Mm -hmm. following the overseer from your vault it opened up And she's now gone out into the wasteland and you're following her footsteps kind of. But the only way that you know of her is through these holotapes Mm -hmm. that she has left behind. Uh, Many other people whose holotapes you listen to are dead. And you're just hearing stories of people who died, Mm -hmm. you know, in the, uh, you know, in the war and everything. But she is still out there just two steps ahead of you (laughs) conveniently at all times. And Mm -hmm. you never get to meet her. And, uh, they sort of revamped that main quest now where you pop out and she's, she's got her own house in Appalachia. (laughs) She's, you know, she's got a place to be now. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one of the biggest changes and, and sort of tie-ins that they did was, you know, you're still dealing with your overseer, but now you actually get to talk with her instead of, uh, yeah. She's kind of like one of the first, not one of the first people you meet in this at all, but uh, mm-hmm. uh, one of the first big sort of quest givers. It's weird mm-hmm. too, especially because what I guess what stands out to me is like, this is not like a, they approach it like narratively in a seamless way. You know, like you said, a year mm-hmm. later, it is really weird to have these unfinished quests that are from the initial release. The before times. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. I like, I just met the, uh, the overseer in in my playthrough Fallout 76 uh, mm-hmm. pretty recently and I'm still collecting tapes from her journey a year ago. <laughs> like, yeah. go here next. You know, and like it's kind of drains it of the, the mm-hmm. mystery and intrigue, but yeah, I don't know. It's fine. It's like, it's whatever. It's like uh, now it, it, it kind of uh, supports it in it as sort of like, a, I don't know, if you want that uh, initial story, it's there and you mm-hmm. get a little flavor and color. But uh Talk to me about how, because when I think of Fallout games with NPC, like just throwing a bunch of like human dolls into this game wasn't going to fix it. Mm-hmm. What do the NPCs like really represent in terms of, human NPCs really represent in terms of like taking, making Fallout 76 a more enjoyable game? Yeah. If um, it does, if they do, if they work. 
Yeah. They do. Mm-hmm. I'm always, I, I've been so cautious with Fallout 76 because mm-hmm. when it began, I, I just enjoy Fallout as a setting and uh, the whole time I think I've been trying to rectify what it is I enjoy about Fallout and what Fallout 76 has. Um and so, you know, I'm kind of primed from the beginning. You mm-hmm. know, I want to like this. And I see, I saw the problems it had at launch. Mm-hmm. But at every big milestone, I I want to like it. And um, I think now it deserves to be liked, uh, definitely. Because in Fallout games of the past, I think my favorite moments are always, um, like, the, the wild situations that you walk into with people and the, mm-hmm. cr- like, ridiculous things that they're doing. <laughs> Uh, and how they justify, I mean, you know, you go into new Vegas and, and you meet the, the cannibal society on the strip or, and just like random people doing, uh, silly things. And it's the same in fallout four. Um, and I think that's what fallout 76, uh, needed that Mm -hmm. you can sort of get from the robots. Like the Mr. Handys are funny and they can say funny stuff, but it's not the same Mm -hmm. as people that are unreliable (laughs) and or unintelligent Mm -hmm. or lying or ridiculous or any other thing um i think they're what i enjoy most about fallout so that's one of the things that 76 benefits from in having them is setting up silly situations that you can walk into like that i'm sure you ran across the guy um i think most people i i've talked to have at this point that runs by you screaming, please, please like help me. It's going to kill me or something like that. And chasing behind him is a chicken, just yeah. a chicken. <laughs> yeah. That's it. And he was so upset and so afraid. And <laughs> I can't explain that situation. You know, it's just a small one-off moment, but mm. you know, putting all those together uh, is enjoyable. So that that's the, the big benefit is, is wacky situations and, and weirdo people. Uh, in right. the wasteland. And do you, do you think like the writing stacks up? Is it there for you? Is some of the quest design or at least those scenarios? And we, we won't like spoil any big beats here, but mm-hmm. um, sorry, chicken spoiler. <laughs> There's a chicken in the game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, do you feel like it, it kind of matches the tone and humor, uh, exceeds it or defies expectations in any ways? Or is it kind of just like on par, fallout, it suffices, it works? Uh, or does it fall short? Where are you, where are you at um, in terms of uh, flavor? For me, I think it kind of sits at par, okay. which makes sense because that's about honestly where Fallout 4 sat for me yeah, was kind of same, yeah. on par. And it's been a minute since I've played Fallout 4, so I'd struggle to give any specific examples. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, both, I think, yeah, as you said, kind of on par. Like they understand the setting. They understand what's funny about it sometimes. I don't think I've come across any people that I just like love and will never forget mm-hmm. or like any storylines that will just like stick with me necessarily. Um, but you know, it's got that flavor. It's got the silly, like, Oh no, capitalism, uh, <laughs> makes a mess of things. Like people are less important than profit and companies mm-hmm. do strange stuff. Um, I signed, I guess a couple of days ago, I was in the Nuka Cola factory and unrelated to, the quest I was there for, there was just a terminal where you could look at and sign a, uh, I don't remember if it was a non-disclosure agreement. I think it was, uh, basically just explaining that like as a tester in the Nuka Cola factory, like you could experience all of these things. And it was yeah, super yeah. long and silly as real non-disclosure agreements are, yeah, yeah. uh, but also over the top because you could die from the soda <laughs> because it's fallout. So of course you probably could, yeah, you never of know. Of course, of course. I mean, that's good to hear. So the evaluation and like from my, again, I'm like, I played like, I played like another initial 12 hours of this and I still don't know where I sit um, Mm -hmm. because there is some weird gating stuff. Like you, you, there, there are some quests with people at the beginning of the game. Um, But a lot of it is kind of like, if I'm not mistaken, uh, gated behind like this level 20 story quest um, Mm -hmm. where the overseer finally you kind of like sends you off into the world and some of the mm-hmm. more uh the newer uh wastelanders content is there um 
but uh jesus forgot the hell i was thinking oh yeah like i i don't know like do it like you said on par feels like a fallout game it feels like i'm playing some kind of lost fallout game from somewhere between new vegas and fallout 4 um Mm -hmm. with random weird multiplayer elements that don't really (laughs) mean much anymore unless you want them to they don't hurt I don't know. I guess like, okay, let me ask you, wh- where do you think the multiplayer sits in this now? And do you even care about it? Is it something that you consider when you play? Is it something that you hope to see expanded or, or are you just more interested in uh, the, uh, the narrative and the world building from here on? I've actually been playing through most of it with one friend. Um, so that's been, it has been nice. And I think uh, from the beginning, the multiplayer part was cool. It's not central to Fallout as a mm-hmm. series to me. The whole game is an odd duck, right? So mm-hmm. we'll just like preface with that. Fallout 76 is kind of an odd duck. Um, but the Wastelanders update made it so that I could go to some of my friends who had bought it at launch, floundered, left, not enjoyed it. I mm-hmm. could say to them, come back and play with me. You might Mm. like it now. Um, And I have one friend who is really enjoying it, playing through it with me. We've chosen different paths through the main story. So we're both playing through each other's quests. So we get to see both of them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like I, we, we chose different companions that we're focusing on. Um, There are like two big ones since the main update. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took my friend along for the final quest with, or, you know, currently the final quest uh with with beckett the bartender who's my (laughs) companion of choice so he got to see the finale of that story um even though he's with a space chick commander daguerre i think is her name um so yeah the the multiplayer has been good for me uh despite the fact that in most uh online rpgs i am a solo person Mm -hmm. like i'll play the online game but solo but it just by happenstance um i've been playing with a friend so Interesting. Yeah, it's interesting you say like you're playing through each other's quests. Um, mm-hmm. And in, in Fallout, uh, in the Wastelanders update, um, as I understand it from the preview you wrote, some of these quests actually like are instanced um, and mm-hmm. lead into different world states or at least like statuses with varying factions in the world. So the, the choice and consequence uh, is there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not global for everyone. It's kind of, you know, it's again, instance to your, your, uh, personal choices, but I'm wondering, do you feel like those, um, that was your question at the beginning of your first preview was like, how is this going to actually play out? How are these, are, how mm-hmm. are these uh, consequences actually going to matter? Do you feel like the, that big, do, do you feel like it's kind of small fry stuff, uh, that, uh, do you, do you feel like these 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 choices and consequences are actually consequential or do you feel like they're just kind of like working with this really kind of uh, rigid odd uh framework and doing a decent fallout impression right um i will say generally before I get into the part where like I I wrote my preview and I had that question, like how much are these things actually going to matter? And then Mm -hmm. the next night I played and I had a good experience that was memorable. Uh, But uh, just broadly speaking, I had to think about what it is that I wanted from choice and consequence in a fallout setting. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you have some, like you you have like the ending of new vegas is kind of the quintessential one right there's lots of choices you can go kind of any way lots of things you do kind of come back and matter um and that's really cool but really i think when it comes to rpg choices all i want is to be like acknowledged and surprised a little bit mm-hmm. like we saw what you did we saw what you chose and it doesn't have to change the story on a macro level it can be a minute to minute thing because if i get a laugh out of like i didn't think that was going to happen like that's good enough for me. Okay. Like I enjoyed it. I don't I, like. I don't think I was expecting a world changing story out of Fallout seventy six. So, you know, sometimes you want like these big decisions that really change the story and they matter and like it, it says something. But 
in Fallout setting, like I said, the weird characters matter most to me. Gotcha. So I think it's those small things, minute to minute, that are uh, more impactful and I enjoy. And on that note, um, the night after or two nights after, I think, I finished playing on the public test or the uh, private test server. Mm-hmm. Um, I got into the live build on on my save and kind of redid everything. And I chose a new path through... Um, the uh, that wayward quest, yeah. uh, you know, you you go in and there's yeah. some raiders bothering them and you have to figure out what to do about it. Um, and to avoid any spoilers for that, because I was amused and I enjoyed it. Um, I, I chose a different path through that quest. I, I chose a different option. And when I came back to turn in the quest, uh, there were a very different situation played out to the huh. one that I had on the chest server that surprised me. I wasn't expecting them to have gone through with uh th- like a cutscene, as it were in huh. fallout style of like characters reacting to what i had decided to do so I, it, it was a good moment and i was surprised and i felt like that was that successfully got what i wanted cool. out of uh you know a fallout human story i guess is right it's just some surprise something funny to laugh at okay cool well that, that's like i think uh, that's going to be the the big green light for a lot of folks. It's just that kind of information. Um, mm-hmm. You can play this with friends or not and still kind of get that fallout flavor, choices, consequences, and still see people running around <laughs> randomly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's yeah. there's silly stuff, right? Like yeah. the that first wayward quest to have you build a thing at your base uh-huh. um, as part of the quest, like a big sign. Yeah. And yeah. Anybody who's come into the game, there's like four bases around the bar, so all with the same sign. And like, <laughs> it's like, it's silly, <laughs> but I don't know. That's how online games are, right? Yeah. I, I forgive a certain amount because like, what are you going to do? A little jank. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Um, something I noted while I was playing is, and I wrote a feature on this, is that I like, I really, I, I think the base building it makes way more sense uh, in in Wastelanders, um, mm-hmm. especially because I think the marketing around the original release was like a little. It, it was tipped toward that Daisy sensation of like, oh, you're gonna run into people and maybe have a standoff and blah blah blah. It's just not the case, uh, and it's mm-hmm. especially not the case now. Uh, if you do run into people, you're probably gonna emote at each other um, and mm-hmm. maybe melee each other just cause. But most people have like. Uh, whatever option turned on that makes it hard to PVP. Um, mm-hmm. cause it's not a fun game to PVP in, <laughs> frankly, but, no, uh, uh, with these new companions and wastelanders strewn about the map, you sort of see a lot of these houses, um, propped up using the crafting system and you kind of ambiently mm-hmm. see more of that at work. Um, the, the, the camp system and, mm-hmm. It feels like to me, and maybe you you can tell me, having played more of the game, uh, and more of the Wastelanders quests, that a lot of the quests are like sort of more, maybe not like fundamentally tied into the, the camp system, either giving you rewards uh, for customization and like kind of building out a space of your own. Um, but I I got the impression that was the case, and I sort of felt maybe it's because I'm coming off the tail of uh, Animal Crossing. Um, I felt more encouraged and rewarded for uh, spending time on a base, especially seeing my companions' little bases. They aren't like that fancy, but uh, mm-hmm. um, there's a real sense of sort of coming up in, in in the world and like making a comfortable home, becoming self sufficient, uh, and that's really at the fore seeing all these wastelanders. Do you feel like that is the case or, or are you like Chris Livingston and just have a sad little platform still and make it work? <laughs> no, I, for one, I loved your bathing suit outfit in that Thank feature. I you. looked at it and I was like, what outfit is that? I need to, <laughs> I need to figure out what that is. Um, whenever they let us, uh, change the clothes on our, um, on our companions, they might be getting a bathing suit. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, as far as the focus on, you know, different people's camps and investing in the sort of the homemaking. I think it was a little bit there from the start. 
But like you, I keep calling it like it started out as Fallout Rust, right? Mm -hmm, Like mm -hmm. survival PvP kind of thing. And it's morphed into Fallout mostly PvE. Yeah. Uh, And uh, the when they added the the shops, player shops, the vending machines, you started to see a lot more care. People already did cool things with their bases, but there was a much bigger incentive because you could find people on the map easier by Mm -hmm. traveling to their their stores. Um, The neat things people would do, you know, some people made traps, some people made bars, some people made weird art installations uh, out of their camps. And that's it's definitely now taken another step up, I think, from that, that you have your companions that hang out there. Once you meet them and build their little mm-hmm. items, so they can hang out. Um, and I'm, I'm definitely with you. I'm a, I'm a base builder. Uh, mine wasn't great before, but when I came <laughs> back, I <laughs> found a new location, started, started over again. Uh, now I've got a cute little, um, I don't know, sort of like dock bar thing going on nice. that I'm, mm-hmm. that I'm really liking. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely into the, the homemaking, uh, aspect of it i'm i'm certainly with you it's Mm -hmm. it's a reason to stay and be in the environment and enjoy it i've never been like a a raider or not in the fallout sense in the you know mmo sense Mm -hmm. um so interesting having a a place to invest in is more important than me yeah and i hope that they lean into that in the end game or Mm -hmm. i don't even know what the fuck the end game is honestly i (laughs) I hear like i i get glimpses of it from the subreddit and such and it's like yeah we nuked a place Mm -hmm. and now we're killing the scourge beast and doing i'm like i don't really care about like min maxing my gear yeah Uh, i more care about like just the sense of like mastering a space and like becoming familiar with it and like making a mark on it and uh i don't know Mm -hmm. wastelanders even though it's not really a, a facelift for the world overall, it does feel like it's sort of leaning into the themes of reclamation. Um, and I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just overall more empowered and, and encouraged to play through it just from a base level. Um, not even just cause mm-hmm. not even just cause there's like living, breathing humans in there, but um, just, just for the energy that, that has sort of fundamentally changed playing that game. Mm-hmm. You uh, said facelift. <laughs> one <laughs> one quick thing. Yeah. Uh, I've I've been playing through the story of uh, or the the companion quests for Beckett, the guy who was like mm-hmm. a bartender, um, and had a good time. And I've one of the things I sp- have specifically noticed while playing is he's a great voice actor, very hmm. very good, conveys a lot of emotion. I love it. And the funny thing is is it highlights how much emotion cannot be conveyed by fallout characters, <laughs> <Yeah>. faces or <laughs> bodies. Yeah. I mean, he's giving this <laughs> very empowering speech while standing very still and just his mouth and his eyebrows slightly move. Also, he has yeah. sunglasses, so that does not help. Um, but <laughs> it, it, it's just funny and it's just the nature of the old creation engine beast, yeah. I guess. But yeah. I, <laughs> Uh, the, the voice actors deserve some credit. They do a great job as best as they can. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a good amount of good writing and, and good voice work to prop all that up. And I, I think it feels like the developers know that's something they got to yeah. they got to drop some cash on <laughs> some good voice work. Um, but yeah, um, so Fallout 76 Wastelanders. Uh, it's I don't know. Final word. Is this the? do you think it's like ready for the, can, can you endorse this? For everyone, strictly Fallout fans, or um, it, I don't get the impressions it's a no-go for you anymore, but uh, who is this for now right. in its current state? Who, who are you endorsing this uh, for? I'd say Fallout fans, okay. for sure. Um, I, and that's not to say that it's going to be your favorite Fallout game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's not the best Fallout game, I don't think, uh, but... It, it, it is a Fallout game. It's in the setting. It now has NPCs that are cool. You're not getting a Fallout game again until who knows when, until after <laughs> Starfield and Elder Scrolls, Elder Scrolls 6. Uh, 20 years. So, 20 years. Yeah, years. this is this is what you've got for Fallout for a <laughs> while, probably, unless they hand off the license to somebody else. Yeah. And I, when it came out, and it was a little bit disappointing, there were clearly some things missing, lacking, lots of bugs, all that, like... Um, what I said to my friends was this is how Elder Scrolls Online was when mm. it came out. Mm. It was also 
kind of a mess. And, uh, you know, Bethesda didn't do that internally. ZeniMax online did that one. And I said, I think what we should hope for is that uh, it pulls a turnaround at about the year one mark. That's mm. about what Elder Scrolls Online did. I don't remember exactly how long uh, the one Tamriel update took to come out, but there was a clear point at which it was like, ah, Elder Scrolls Online is good now, actually. <laughs> um, and we should hope for that for Fallout 76. And I think this is it, the Wastelanders update. Like, this is the Fallout thing it really needed to make it worth saying, yeah, if you like Fallout, you should just play it because, gotcha. you know, why not? Um, yeah, I, I get the same impression. This is the beginning and I hope, I think that's our hope right now. And it's going to be one to keep an eye on. Uh, and we definitely will be like, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty into it. Um, this is the beginning of that turnaround, that trajectory that hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, Bethesda can sustain and find a nice rhythm of, uh, you know, kind of updates and, and g give it, give it a new sort of cadence in life that, uh, mm -hmm. it should we kind of had hoped for from the start, but you know, we've seen worse games turn around in bigger ways and mm -hmm. it's, for better or worse, sort of an industry norm at this point, it's become like a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and probably <laughs> from a business perspective, I can't uh, quite pick apart is probably, you know, going to be a thing for a while, you know, take mm -hmm. a, a lower risk on a lower budget thing and see if you can get the anchorage to turn it around. Um, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think we're in a, um, uh, it's, a, it's going a good direction. I'm going to be playing more of it for sure. Mm -hmm. And, uh, decking out my crappy base and <laughs> I feel like home. But, yeah. Cool. Uh, well, shit. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming, Lauren. It's, uh, yeah, thanks a for having to have you. We'll, we'll get you on here more often and talk about, I don't know what other. I, I think when the El year of RPGs. Yes. Once El don't when, worry, when I'm watching. El when Elden Ring season happens, it's going to be just like the James and Lauren show for <laughs> a couple months. Yeah. Um, but anyway, cool. Uh, next up, we got Chris Livingston and I are going to be talking about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Hey everybody, we're back. It's James here with PC Gamer, and joining me is Chris Livingston uh, to talk about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. There's a new one of those games. Vikings. Vikings. Um, who? <laughs> a pretty original setting, you know? Uh, pretty, pretty wild original theme and setting. Uh, Vikings are pretty chic uh, post God of War. Um, there's a big popular anime and manga. Have you heard of this? No. Uh, Vinland... Whichever one you're talking about, I would not have heard of. <laughs> oh, I'm shit. not up on the manga scene. Uh, I'm not either, but I watched this Vinland Saga. Um, it's just it's just cool to be a Viking right now. And uh, yeah, beards, beards, and axes. Right. It's kind of of the era. A lot of artisanal chocolate makers finally seeing themselves represented in media. It's good to, good to know, good to see. And Assassin's Creed Valhalla was announced last week. It was rumored for a long time. You know, there was kind of the usual cycle of, I think, Schreier leaks, Kotaku leaks or something like that. And uh, Ubisoft kind of can't keep a cap on this stuff, no matter how hard they try. Um, well, with how many did they say? 14 different studios yeah. around the world kind of working <laughs> it's, on it, it's I guess. Pretty tough. I guess you can't really. I mean, no. how could you really keep a lid on everything? No, but no. yeah, it's something. It's something we've kind of known about um, for a while, but finally are getting a little bit of look at with a couple of trailers. Yeah, we got that cinematic trailer last week. Just today, this morning, we got well a gameplay trailer, and I'm doing I'm doing the finger quote quotes here uh, because, as your headline succinctly states, there's probably two to three seconds of actual gameplay it's all in engine so to speak um but functionally like doesn't really do much more than last week's uh uh cinematic trailer um yeah there's there's not much of like say you know seeing the character being controlled by someone i mean you can yeah. see some of the things it looks like he's capable of doing um in combat at least but it's not from any kind of like gameplay yeah. perspective it's uh it's still very much a cinematic trailer just with a a little bit of action that's not um you know just like a movie 
Yeah, that's fine. It's sure. We we get we we got the flavor here, and we we kind of we have some information to kind of build off of. Um, they didn't just throw out these trailers in a vacuum. We know things about this game. Uh, and first off, though, I kind of want to get your what's what's the Livingston take from here? Because uh, did you enjoy Odyssey? Did you enjoy Origins? Sort of. What's your so I played Origins and I liked it a lot. Um, I have not played Odyssey yet, so I've not okay. really experienced the whole RPG thing that it, it mm. brought back. I understand people really enjoyed it. and It was this big kind of shift, I guess, um, for the game, which sounds really exciting to me. I just never got down and actually played it because it sounded like it was like 100 hours it's plus. I was long. like, I just it's the kind of thing like I should be doing now when I've got you know, a yeah. bit, bit of extra time. Um, and I probably will play before Valhalla comes out. Um, so I don't know. I don't really know what the RPG stuff is like. I really enjoyed Origins. I thought it was like a, just a fantastic world they built. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a lot of fun with it. I The one thing I wasn't really a fan of, and I'm kind of hoping it's not in Valhalla, is this is the way they kind of sectioned off the world kind of MMO yeah. style where yeah. it's like, Oh, you need to, this, this region is suitable for your level. And this region is, you know, five levels above you. So if you go there, you know, the most basic grunt is just going to waste you instantly, which I, I get, like, I kind of, I understand that whole concept of games, but I have trouble with, I don't know, I guess the internal logic of a coyote, in this part of the world, um, I can kill with a stick and a coyote in this part of the world is level 50 and will destroy me. So yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> it's not my favorite thing. I didn't it didn't didn't bother me so much in Origins because the world was so big and I thought the progression was pretty good. Like it just it it felt in time with my natural progression through the world mm-hmm. that when I was when I had gained enough levels to go someplace, I was kind of already ready to go there um but in terms of like oh i just want to forget about quests and the story and just go explore i don't like this kind of sectioning off of of zones it's not my favorite thing in the world yeah it kind of sucks the wind out of your sails a little bit um when you have that very press conferencey moment of oh look a mountain can i can i go there and the answer is yes in these games but if you manage only if you manage to avoid being spotted (laughs) by an enemy Um, and it can it can really get in the way of you know when you're if you are following a storyline yeah and you've gotten say this quest has like you know five five chapters to it and you get to chapter four and you're like i can't can't wait to see how this quest ends and then it turns out the fifth chapter and is in some part of the world that you're not even close enough yeah uh so then you have to like well i guess i'll grind a bunch of side quests or, you know, rating quests or whatever. And that can really throw a wrench into the kind of internal uh, storyline you're kind of playing with. Like, Mm -hmm. would my character just go, well, I really need to figure out the end of this, you know, my revenge tale or whatever. But first I'm going to go do a bunch of tasks for the village. You know, it just, it kind of, it can kind of throw you off if it's not, paced out properly yeah and odyssey had that problem too it may be maybe worse than than origins it's been a while but uh i remember at the time like i don't know who wrote the op-ed on our website but someone said like i've had i'm having a much better time playing with like this paid forward leveling boost which is right yeah but uh yeah um valhalla is kind of following from what we know is, is going to be made sort of in the, uh, in, in a similar framework to these last Assassin's Creed games. The emphasis is on role playing. Uh, it's less on sort of the, uh, earlier structure of those Assassin's Creed games, which are all about like climbing and all, you know, all that stuff will be in there. Um, locomotion system traversal. Uh, but the emphasis here is on more of a, a Witcher style, uh, uh, and pace of game where you're a third person character, you're running around this big world and you know, you have, uh, dialogue choices, um, to make, uh, you can sort of like impress your, in Odyssey sort of limited, but, uh, 
there, there was a spectrum of role playing there and personality there onto these sort of more rigid, uh, broadly, more broadly rigid characters. Um, so, you know, you felt like you were sort of playing a role and having, making an impression on this character and the world at large. Um, and uh, again, like Odyssey, you'll be able to play uh, man or woman, which is pretty cool. Um, I think yeah. Cassandra, if you do play, you should play, get, get a taste of Odyssey and just go play Cassandra at least for a bit, um, Chris, because like I'm forgetting uh, Origins character, he was great. Um, Ubisoft. Someone took my tongue, but I can't remember his name. Yeah, Ubisoft is really kind of, killing it with some of their protagonists lately mm -hmm. i i don't remember liking many of them before this Ezio was like cool in a brooding way and maybe just through pure exposure over three games or whatever he was around for um but the writing and the characterization is like is pretty fucking good at least on a player protagonist level sometimes the stuff that extends outward and the broader uh narrative isn't isn't always uh, killing it, um, uh, but Valhalla. Let's let's sort of talk some some details. Uh, this is set during ninth century England, and yeah, you're playing. Um, oh gosh, what's his name? E Evor. I don't know if it's Ivor or Evor. I can't. I can't recall how they pronounced it. Um, yeah. I'm just, I would just say Ivor. I don't Ivor. know. Ivor. Sounds, Evor. E. Evor sounds a little bit too Eor uh, mm. in the. One of the Pooh associations probably aren't doing any favors, but uh, yeah, you're a warrior and a Viking clan leader. Um, and <laughs> what do you, do you know much about Viking history, Chris? You a scholar in this? Um, I I know they had cool boats. I'm yeah. very excited to see some boats. I think Assassin's Creed boats are just always kind of fun. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, I hope I hope there's a lot of stuff in boats. I hope my Viking uh, boat rowers. I don't know. They probably have an actual name. I hope they um, sing songs. I'd like to hear some some Viking songs. Um, and I hope there's some kind of ship combat. There was there was uh, only a very little in Origins. Yeah, it was like um, flashbacks or something. It was like it? yeah, a flashback to a different character, but it's still just kind of badass. I think they yeah. they make it very exciting. Um, so yeah, you'll you know apparently you can sail up and and get your crew out and go attack um, castles and settlements and forts and things like that. The trailer showed a battering ram, which I am Ooh. always a fan of in games, um, especially yeah. after playing banner Lord for a while. So it's good to have a nice little battering ram session with the, <laughs> the castle you're sieging. Yeah. Raids are raids are a thing. So raids aren't going to be just like this kind of like implied, you know, you're a Viking. It's implied you're raiding, and maybe see it in a cutscene or two. Raids are a thing you'll be you'll be executing, which is pretty cool. You'll also have a like a hub, and I love I love I'm a sucker for these. I don't know about you, but like a, a hub that evolves. Um, there's going to be like a, I think you've like a village or something you'll return to that will grow and change uh, depending on sort of your progression through the story. Um, yeah, you. Um I guess you build a settlement in England. I, I was kind of thinking when mm -hmm. I first heard it, it would be like in Norway and you would, you would go back to it, but it's, I guess it's in England and um, you can upgrade it. You can make the barracks bigger. You can have a tattoo parlor, which sounds pretty dope. Um, can I get some, can I get, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to get every tattoo. In yeah. The game. I think that'll be my, my main quest. Um, yeah. I, I love the idea. You know, I'm trying to think of like, games that have really done the settlement management well and it seems like it's almost always kind of disappointing but mm -hmm. it's still something that really appeals to me like oh is a place i can go so i'm not just like this kind of untethered character in a world just kind of running around yeah there's a place you can go and um spend some time and i guess that's where your kind of romantic uh storylines might play out oh, um right. from what i understand and mm -hmm. You can also, uh, they haven't given a lot of det details on this, but you can like create a custom Viking raider, like a member of your crew mm. and like lend, you can lend him to 
like your friends for them to use in raids. And so if they use your Viking in a raid, you get some of the loot. I don't know. It sounds weird, huh. but kind of cool. Like just kind of crafting some Tr- kind of like trading. I'm going to like make you a, Hey buddy, I made you something. <laughs> I'm going to send them back with a bunch of new tattoos. If that's possible. <laughs> oh, that would be great. Um, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's uh, the setting and the, who you're playing is intriguing. Like, from just a, I don't know, thematic perspective, gameplay perspective. I like the idea of me being a kind of a monster uh, and pillaging, taking, uh, warmongering as I see fit um, and expanding down into England because this this was the history of, of the time uh, between 860 and 900 AD. Um, Viking armies were just kind of like, trying to lay lay waste and conquest to uh, as much of England as they could and elsewhere, right? Um, and so we'll see we'll see England kind of pushing back against that too. So it'll be kind of cool to see that those historical figures come into play, which is more, more concrete historical figures, I guess, come into play because that's sort of a staple of I love I love and hate Assassin's Creed's treatment of his history because it's fun from just a very pulpy standpoint. Like, oh, who's, oh, I know. Yeah, I think I read about that guy once. Oh, he's evil here. He's evil in the game. Um, right. But those broad strokes are also really reductive. And it's like, I don't know, were Vikings good? Or is your character a hero? And, you know, and do you think Ubisoft or the writing or the, has the ability to cast them in a, you know, morally ambiguous light? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, that ne- wasn't necessarily the case with the Odyssey. It was. It was definitely like Templars versus assassins, and everything. Annoyingly, a lot of these political factions tend to like just be on the side of one or the other, um, mm-hmm. rather than, you know, sort of aloof and unaware, and and the, the nuance isn't there. But uh, I don't know. Do, do you feel attached or, or bothered or do these guys are bothered by uh, any of that stuff at all uh, on your end, or are you just kind of here along for the Disney Disney Park Universal Studios history tour? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think we'll see if there's any kind of real nuance or anything to it. Um, it, it it is all sort of you know kind of silly uh, in 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 a way. Um, but I think, you know, they've always done such great things with the setting and the detail that's built yeah. in. And obviously, like, even if they're, uh, you know, very heavily tampering with history, they do a lot of homework when it comes to um, the, a place in time and, and how, like, like how dedicated they kind of are to making it this kind of, uh, you know, realistic place that feels you know it feels real it feels Mm -hmm. real and realistic and the detail is usually pretty incredible um so i'm i'm looking forward to kind of running around and being a a viking (laughs) yeah it's uh i think that's like one of the things that stood out origins and odyssey it's bonkers the scale at which these worlds like exist and not only that the systems within them i remember gdc or somewhere uh there was a a talk about how, I mean, you read a lot of like back or kind of uh, PR filtered quotes about every NPC has a job or whatever, but literally right. all of these NPCs are just going about their day to day. And you, you can press a button in these games to like watch them speed up time and they'll bring stuff around and uh, carry boxes to and fro that into, you know, like fruit and, and such that makes sense. Um, Uh, boats will like make trips back and forth between trading posts and yada yada and there's a real like sense of life to these worlds and you know i think a lot of the and i i blame myself for this too is like a lot of the um, talk about these games sort of like approaches from a narrative perspective when really what really sticks with me in these games is just like again the world itself it's these are some of the most impressive mind-boggling uh open worlds in games like today and yeah i would just i would go like instantly from kind of staring out at the horizon and going holy crap look at that world to like staring at 
some tile work on a <laughs> street, you know, two inches from my face, you know, as part of in a part of the map that like no one else is going to go to. And it's like, look at this incredible. Mm-hmm. It's like a macro and micro detail are both like just that make you just stop. Yeah. Stop what you're doing and just kind of admire it for a while. So um, that that's always super impressive. I mean, I'm really looking forward to to seeing, you know, just the, the world they've they've created this time. Yeah. And, um, other other details here. I'm, I'm reading through our you can go, go go check out. Go to just Google this game and PC Gamer. Yeah. Also, if you're a, a fan of the uh, modern day storyline, oh, the fuck. Oh, that was my, yeah. type stuff, <laughs> um, which I should say, like, I know a lot of people are because I remember. Yeah. I, I kind of made some snarky remark in some Assassin's Creed thing I wrote with, like, can we skip this Animus crap, please? And like, there are people who really love it and are really, really into love it. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is fun. Which is like great. I was like, I was surprised with that. I don't know. I thought this stuff was kind of hokey and silly. And it's like, I always hated being dragged out of the, <laughs> the past into the future and to like, what be walking around an office or whatever, whatever the story is like, I can, I can, I think, I, I think maybe it's just my brain. It's like, I just want to focus on the, the historical story and my character and not have to like juggle this whole other yeah. timeline and stuff like, yeah, just let me back to run around and jump into hay bales and stab people in the neck. Um, <laughs> But yes, there is a continuation of the character from the last two games, uh, which I can barely remember. I literally, I, I played like 150 hours of Odyssey, and I can't remember a single thing about that stuff. No, I do remember. Okay, you know what though? Like, I'm not going to spoil anything. Uh, I think they are taking it in a better direction, um, based on what I played in Odyssey at least in terms of how they integrate the more fantastic shit with uh, the historical stuff. And Odyssey was good at this, also bad at this, because before you, there were like tiny interludes, um, like literally like five to 10 minute interludes uh, where you, you know, head back to the modern time as you do in Assassin's Creed games. But, the bulk of that stuff was say for the very end of the game uh, and front loading. It was, you know, like just a bunch of, Hey, here's, we're going to go around this, uh, but it's history. What's up? You got a boat. Uh, don't worry about that future stuff. Not, not too integrated, but at the end, and this isn't a spoiler, I guess, because there are, there's literally like DLC trailers out there for it. You know, Atlantis is brought in, in, into the, into the mix and it, the, the, I hope to see this. I really hope to see this in Valhalla, at least maybe not like until the very end again, but rope in mythology, like over the top of history, slowly, subtly. Um, don't go full God of war with it, but uh, you know, get a little mystic and strange rather than just go, it's sci-fi. We're in the future now. Uh, rope in some of that, like that cultural flavor that, the setting provides and I don't know, give it that, uh, give it, give it a more subtle sci-fi, uh, fantasy vibe than a more contrived, like, uh, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a giant iPod that makes me see my ancestors thoughts. Um, I don't know. I think, I think they're on a, on a, this is a long winded fucking way of saying the trajectory is good for that. I'm also like just so bored by it, but it's, it's coming back. We're going to be doing, uh, more, I don't know. Re, I don't know. What is it called? The animus animus stepping into animus? a thing. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't, uh, I guess I vaguely remember some of that from origins. I think it was like hmm. special encounters. Like you could go and fight some kind of like, egyptian god or something i don't recall really doing much of it but it wasn't it wasn't like you know you're just wandering around egypt and then there's some mythological stuff happening it was sort of felt like it was kind of self-contained right it's integrated better later on and so i think i think maybe this is the long play uh just make every assassin's creed game a god of war game but only at the end 
only at the end or in the DLC. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Ooh, uh, you briefly mentioned uh, smooching. So smooching is a thing. There's going to be those uh, the romances are back. And I think uh, Origins, you were kind of stuck with your the story partner, which is good. She was great. She's amazing. Um, Odyssey. Yeah, because you were married in that, I guess, yeah. right? Yeah, that was a, actually, that was like really... That was like one of the things that kind of kept me playing that game was that relationship was so interesting. Um, and I'm mad I can't remember their names, but uh, Odyssey, I just had sex with literally Bayek. everyone, and it was a reward. Was it Bayek? Bayek. Boom. There it is. Anna? Was Anna the other one? Anna, I can't remember. Yeah. I got one name. That's that's all my brain's going <laughs> to cough up today. Uh, I'm seeing. <laughs> I'm guessing you wrote this. What's up with the bear? There's a bear. Yeah, what's up with the bear? Um, so yeah, I was this. They, you know, Ubisoft has this press site where you know press people can log in and like get assets, like screenshots and stuff. And they had already released all of them, but I saw one with a bear in it. And I was like, hey, what's with the bear? Um, they didn't release that. Maybe there's like a bear. Maybe you can be friends with a bear. Uh, but I think it's what it is. Is um, I remembered that Origins had this yes. animal taming system. You could make friends with animals and they would kind of follow you around. And I think I composed an army of hippos at some point. Um, I remember now. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember anything about it. It just sounds like something I would do. Um, so, yeah, I think that's probably what it is. Like there's a bear. There are bears and you can tame them would be my guess. There was, was there taming and there was taming and. Yes, Odyssey. It was again. Odyssey. It was sort of like a skill you got if you wanted on the tree. I'm wondering, and this is the trend with a lot of Ubisoft games: is you know they follow the same structure, but they will tend to blow out certain systems or like or highlight certain systems in the sequels. Even if like this, like Far Cry games, you know, like Far Cry Primal was. What if we just made a whole game about taming animals uh, in yeah. in a Far Cry map? And it's pretty good. I will debate anyone. Far Cry Primal is pretty fun. Um, you could ride a fucking bear, for God's sake. It was great. Um, it'd be nice to see some of those systems teased out and sort of like played with, and I'm I'm certain we will. Especially because why would you make this key art with a bear with a, a roomy eyeball and a scar over the top of it if you weren't going to make this bear like a main character um, yeah. or an important character? But uh and I guess you have a crow because everyone's got a bird. All the protagonists have birds, right? Yep. So you can do that, like um, that kind of scouting system. That will be sky better. view scouting yeah. kind of thing. It's, that's always pretty cool. A lot of the same stuff. It's like uh, it's it's funny because we the the gameplay trailer again did not show much gameplay, but you could just infer so much based on the last two games. And you know, I'm not mad about it. Um, it's going to be real interesting to see. And I think the big questions I have are. And one was addressed. I, I don't remember where I read it. But, um, excuse me, uh, Valhalla won't be the longest Assassin's Creed game. I think some of the feedback from Odyssey was that it was too big. Can you imagine? <laughs> In uh, 2020. Well, I mean, I don't know. I think big is great. I guess I can see if you don't have a lot of time. But then, you know, why not take your time and... It, I guess it depends on what the what the size means. Does it mean I have to yeah. do a million side quests to finish, or does it mean like because you know Red Dead Redemption Two is so long, it was so long, but I kind of loved how long it was because uh -huh. when a game is is really long, you can kind of it's like reading a big novel, you know, yeah. ten pages a night. Like after a few months, it kind of becomes a little part of your life. Yeah. Um, and so I like when games are long, as long as they're not needlessly long. So, um, but you know, short games, shorter games are also nice too, because I'm, sometimes you don't want to live with the game. Sometimes you just want to play it and finish it and move on. I feel you. And I, I feel like like the, the very wide scale for where this game could land in terms of length is probably something like eh, between 40 to 120 hours. And yeah. I think, uh, all, uh, all of that is still long to me, but, uh, um, I don't mind him again, Assassin's Creed. I don't know. Historically has always been like this meaty, this game series that I play on 
like during this summer doldrums or just like the long weeks and months of uh, summer when I less stuff is going on. So it's the one series I don't really care how long it is. And I think this uh, Valhalla will probably fit into that for me. Uh, are there any other like tidbits that we kind of missed here in terms of uh, what's new, what we know, what we saw, what we feel? You can throw axes. Can throw axes. Yeah, can throw axes. Can gotcha. dual wield axes. I wonder. I was kind of like looking to see if, if that was like a real thing. Like, do like did people ever actually dual wield weapons in general? Like two swords, two axes. Um, I was reading some posts that said like, not you know like there's some evidence for it, but then some not for it. Typically. Typically you had a shield and your shield was a weapon too. Like this doesn't really probably happen that much in games, but like smashing a dude with your shield um, is like a a really good like attack. And it's usually, at least for me, I think of a shield as like, I'm just going to hide behind it until Uh he's done swinging. But I guess historically it's like kind of a huge weapon shield. Um, There was, there was, there were, there were dual wielders with uh, swords and like a, dagger thing with a hook that you could grab the other guy's sword and possibly Whoa. break it. I don't um I forget right. what it was called. I think it was just called a sword breaker. Sword, um, <laughs> sword breaker or pricker? Breaker. Breaker. Yeah, it had like grooves and you could catch the guy's sword. I don't I don't know if you would really break it, but you would you would sort of catch his blade in your groove of your dagger and so he couldn't Damn, I don't video know. games are uh got some work to do. And just use the same I, shit I, forever. I don't know if anyone ever ran around with two axes at once. Probably not. It sounds too I think heavy. It, I think tired. I would probably keep a shield and one yeah. axe, maybe. Well, uh bad game then. Bad game. Um Well, he doesn't have a shield. He's got a shield and two axes. And a third axe sense. that he throws. Oh, yeah, he's got a lot of weapons. He is and he's assassin. got wrist blades. He's got assassin blades. Well, actually that I, uh, it's unknown whether this guy is an assassin or not. Um, and I mean, that's probably a big lore point for a lot of people. I'm not sure I give a shit, but, uh, there's some mystery around the, uh, the, uh, uh, this character's purpose. And and, and he's got a, he's got an assassin blade. Wouldn't that make him an assassin? Does he actually have one? Why do I see this? Yeah. In the cinematic trailer, he jumped the dude in the eye with it. Wait, no, you're totally right. You'd have to be. Why was I thinking he didn't? Yeah. Well, wasn't, I don't know. There was one game that was started with a fake out or something. That's what it was. That's what's got me. That's what's you got actually, me. You played for like a few hours as a Templar or something. Yeah. They did a switch. Yeah. I can't remember which one that was. Okay. Um, it's coming back to me. I'm just saying like Assassin's Blades don't, eh, they're not a sure thing. Um, Plus his came out of the top of his wrist <laughs> instead of under his wrist. Isn't that where they usually come from under the wrist? I think so. I'm sure there's probably like a, 40 minute video we could watch right now. That's already out about this Probably. examining um, the blade itself. But uh, yeah, Assassin's Creed Valhalla um, didn't get to learn as much as we wanted to, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be a slow trickle of information over the summer. Oh yeah. E3 or whatever. That We've was. got at least, we should maybe have a pool for how many official trailers get released. Cause they do a lot. Doesn't Ubisoft do a lot? They they typically do. They they typically have a, a pretty good uh and robust game plan for uh press releases and trailers and so on. Um but this is holiday twenty twenty. Uh barring you know unforeseen circumstances and assuming uh their remote working strategy is working out, but uh it's cool. There's games still coming out. Games are still coming out <laughs> despite uh the pandemic and such. Uh, so that's good. It's good. 14 studios going 14 studios. You say, yeah, I, I, Something that like sounded that. right when I said it, but I'm not sure. Well, I'm going to quote you on it anyway. Um, okay. I'm excited. We'll see. Uh, this is going to be, it's going to be real interesting playing this game. Any RPG in the era of cyberpunk, which is still coming out later this year. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I think RPGs are going to be placed in, sort of a competitive or at least a uh, interesting uh, field, at least uh, based on what people are playing and how people are going to compare what they play. 
um, in terms of RPGs, because RPG snobs, including myself, are the worst. Um, so picky about our stuff. All right. Uh, well, that's going to do it for Valhalla and chatting about Valhalla. And unless you have any closing comments about Vikings or uh, beard braids. Um, yeah, I hope there's a lot of beard options. I really hope so, too. If there's not. And, I mean, if there's a tattoo parlor, there's got to be like a beard kiosk where you go and get different types of braids. I'm got, into that. I, I guess. I'm into that. Yeah, me too. Uh, but thanks, Chris. Thanks for chatting Assassin's Creed. We'll, I'm sure we'll be talking about this uh, a couple times over the next year or two. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, next up, we got nothing. It's the end of the show. Uh, you can catch the show every week. PCGamer.com slash tag slash podcast. Go to YouTube.com slash PCGamer.com. <laughs> YouTube.com slash PCGamer.com. YouTube.com slash PCGamer for uh, the VOD after the fact. You can go to Spotify or iTunes to catch us. Um, uh, get those, get subscribed, leave us ratings, give us some feedback. We love it. Uh, and the show will be weekly again from now on. I'm done moving. Knocking on wood, I'm done moving. No more moving games for a while. Down in Austin now. Loving it. Loving that I'm in a new place where, that I can't explore. But hey, we're all in the same boat. Uh, same Viking boat. Same same Viking boat. And we're all paddling and yelling and ready to burn a village down to the ground. Uh, metaphorically speaking. Uh, but until next week, don't forget to what? Uh, play games. All right, buddy. All right, buddy. I got to like commission commission emma or, or uh just record someone saying it and then play it because i can't I got, remember what I, I don't can't remember what i'm supposed to say you gotta prep me you really can't remember all right well maybe it's my uh, fault it's my oh fault. wait game on game on, game on.